Today, I think we're going to get some bull snake eggs. I've been checking them every day. We have that one, that one, and this one all have lay boxes because they should be due to lay first. So we're going to check them out here. This is Brad. Where is she first? All right. She's in her box, not staring at me. This is just kind of what I do every day. Oh, oh, she is fat though. No babies. Then we have our albino het hypo in here. She, I've been expecting eggs for a little while now. Nothing yet, but it looks like she's kind of roughing up her moss, so she's got to be getting close. Well, oh for two, that's okay. We might not have eggs today. And finally, this is our azanthic female. She, <gasps> oh, she's got so many eggs. Ah! Okay, well, I know what I'm filming today. This is a pretty exciting clutch for us because it's our first time breeding that female. And this is who the sire is, or the father. This is Mr. Wilson. He is our hypoalbino bull snake, and he is het for white side. But we were told that he is also het azanthic. We've never been able to prove that part out, so that's why we decided to pair him with an azanthic female, so that um, theoretically half the babies should be azanthic as well. But we're going to set him back in here, and let's look at that mama with all of those pearly white eggs. All right, let's take a peek. We just brought her up. Oh man, girl, for your first ever clutch, this looks really nice. We have her favorite egg over here. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten perfect looking eggs. And unlike those fox snake eggs we had earlier, which was a super bummer, they were all slugs, all of these are white and they're round and they look like fully inflated little water balloons, so they are all fertile eggs, or should be. I'm going to put her in a separate container just so she doesn't get too stressed out while we are moving the eggs here. Did she get them all out? Yeah, it feels like she got all the eggs out. Usually you can tell near their cloaca if there is still another egg or two stuck in there. It just looks really thick, um, but she, she pushed them all out overnight, so she's looking fantastic. That's another big risk you take breeding a bull snake for the first time is they may not push them all out, so it's always really nerve-wracking when you're expecting their first clutch. But I am very happy that she got everything out successfully. As you can see, she laid most of them in a pretty big uh, clump here. And if you look close, you'll see that they are connected by this thin layer of kind of a glue-like material that's produced by the mother. And that helps connect the eggs together so that during incubation, if like one end of the clutch is warmer than the other, that temperature kind of gradually evens out and keeps them all from fluctuating too much. But in captivity, we of course uh, control the temperature and keep it steady throughout incubation. So there's no need for them to be clumped together. It wouldn't hurt to leave them together, but we like to separate them so that everything stays consistent during incubation for the best chance of a higher hatch rate. So what we're going to do is we are going to, first, before I even um, take these out, I'm going to prepare the incubation material. For egg incubation, we just use an appropriately sized tub that will give enough space for all the eggs to be about an inch away from each other. And for our medium, we like to use perlite. There are several different things you can use. There's perlite, there's sphagna moss and vermiculite. And in this video right here, we actually tested perlite and vermiculite on the same clutch to see which one performed better. And you'd be surprised at the results. So go check that one out after this. But today we're going to use perlite. We're simply going to mix two parts perlite with one part water so that after you mix them all together and you squeeze it, it doesn't drip, but it still maintains its shape. sure there's some ventilation or airflow to the eggs inside of this. So for that, we just have a couple of holes drilled in the side. This used to be one of my travel containers for snakes when I'd bring them to programs. So I had a bunch of them drilled previously, but I've since taped up most of them, all except for two. This one has clear tape. All except for two on each side because you don't want too much ventilation or the eggs will dry out too quick. Next, I'm going to make small indentations, one for each egg. And now for my favorite part, 
taking the eggs and placing them in because I like, I don't know, bull snake eggs are so big, they're just fun to work with. Now, when you're moving them from the lay box to the incubation tray, you wanna keep them in the same orientation. If they rotate, there is a chance that the fluid may kill the embryo inside. This, however, is not as important during the first 24 hours. Right now, since she laid them just a few hours ago, we could roll them and the baby hasn't yet attached to the side of the egg, so it would probably be just fine. But just to be safe, I'm going to keep the same orientation anyway. We'll nestle them all in here. For these eggs that are stuck together, I'm going to slightly pry them apart. A lot of them will pop off from each other quite easily, but sometimes they stick a little bit more than others, especially if you let them sit for like a day. At that point, if they're showing some resistance when you try to peel them apart, you're just gonna wanna leave them together. But since these are fresh, I should be able to separate them all. And 10. I can't believe it. She didn't have any slugs. All those eggs look great. I'm just gonna look through the moss, make sure there aren't any others, which there's not, so we got them all. And I'm just going to kind of fill in along the sides of each egg to make sure they're snug and they have no chance of rolling around. The eggs really shouldn't, if you nestle them in well enough, they shouldn't roll around during incubation. But in case they do, it doesn't hurt to mark the uppermost part of the egg so that you know which orientation it's supposed to be sitting at. We've heard horror stories of people's entire incubators like falling or the entire tray of eggs sliding out and the eggs just falling everywhere. But since they had the topmost part um, marked on each egg, they were able to put them back in the same orientation and all the babies were fine. So just in case of a freak accident, we're going to mark the top of each of these eggs. why some of the X's aren't in the middle and they're on the edge is because when she laid this egg it was kind of up at an angle so we put it at that same angle in the tray and so that means its uh, topmost point is actually over here on the end. And finally we're going to put the lid on, write down the date and the parents. The babies in these eggs have some potential of being some really cool snakes. Because even if Mr. Wilson here is only albino and hypo, het, white side, and he doesn't prove out to be um, het axanthic as well, and if the mom is only axanthic, no hets whatsoever, all of the babies will still have one copy of the axanthic morph from mom, and they'll have one copy of both the hypo and the albino gene from dad, so they'll all be triple het for axanthic, hypo, and albino. So even though they might all look normal, they'll have some crazy genetics going on. If we hit the odds and he is in fact het axanthic, or if maybe the axanthic mom has some hidden hets that we don't know about, we could have some crazy looking babies inside. We could hatch albinos or hypos or who knows what. So we cannot wait until about 55 to 60 days from now when these babies start hatching. Well, we are going to put, I mean, the parents back in their bins, but we're also going to put the eggs in incubation at about 80 to 82 degrees degrees Fahrenheit. Conveniently, the temperature that these eggs have to incubate at is the same temperature we keep our green tree pythons in. So to incubate them, we can just simply, all right, we've got 81 degrees here. That's close enough. There you go, eggs. And we're gonna call it good. We'll see that clutch in about 55 to 60 days when they start pipping. Thank you everybody for watching today's video and as always, thank you to our Patreon backers for your amazing support, especially during these crazy pandemic times. At least we have breeding snakes to keep us occupied in quarantine, right? Yeah. Maybe when they start hatching, things will finally calm down. Who knows? Stay safe, everybody. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.